Hi, sweeties. Let's talk about being prepared. We're going to prep our pantry with a stockpile of emergency food. And we're going to try to build a stockpile for three months, six months, even up to a year. We're going to get to all that. I'm just at the beginning. This is uh, beginning stages of being prepared. We're going to focus on foods to buy to build your stockpile for emergency preparedness. Let's get into it, but please first subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell. And now let's get into talking about our prepper's pantry and building our stockpile. And shout out to Denise Jordan of This and That with Denise Jordan. I was watching her channel and she did a prepper's pantry video and really inspired me to get on this. You know, it's something that I had talked about for a while with my husband that we need to get prepared and make sure we don't run short this fall just in case we have a second wave. So after watching her video, I was like, Ooh, let's go, let's get it together. So I'm just at the beginning of my prepper's pantry um, emergency food stockpile and I will update with videos and keep you posted of how my progress grows. The first category we're gonna talk about are canned foods, canned meats, Canned vegetables, canned fruits are all important to build your stockpile. Now this is my working pantry. So this is enough just for the next few weeks. There's not enough room in here to... Now, while my pantry is pretty large, it's not enough room to keep, you know, cases of canned vegetables. They can take up a lot of space or cases of canned foods. So, it's important to have sort of a working stockpile like this and then another location or several other locations where you can store food. So for this, I actually bought this a while ago. I was lucky enough to find my favorite clearance sticker. That's important when you are shopping, you really want to watch those prices. Always check the expiration date. That doesn't expire until 2022, August of 2022. Check the expiration dates when you're buying for your stockpile because you don't want to end up buying a whole bunch of something that expires in a couple of months. I've got canned salmon and those are great in salmon salads, similar to like a tuna salad and or salmon cakes, one of my favorite. I can eat those for breakfast, lunch and dinner. I'll show you my uh, salmon cakes recipe using canned salmon real soon. Make sure you stock up on those things that you use a lot. I use lots of canned tomatoes, so diced tomatoes. So I'll be buying lots more diced tomatoes. I don't use as much canned vegetables. Um, so those are going to stay on the shelves for quite a while. And that's something that you know you always have for backup. You know, I'm always going to have um, the canned green beans because and the great thing about these canned foods like crushed pineapples canned fruits is that you can open the can and just eat the food straight away you don't have to even cook any of these things they're already cooked through they can all be eaten as is so just in case there is an emergency where the um, you don't have a, a source of heat you don't really have to worry about it. You've always got something to eat and you don't have to reconstitute it. You don't have to add any water to it. It's ready to go. And when you're shopping for your stockpile, make sure that you are kind of thinking about which things go together to create meals. Like for your beans, you can combine them with other vegetables. You can combine them with chicken breast to make a full meal. So think about that when you're buying your um, shopping for your stockpile is what kind of foods go with other kind of foods. What can you put together for a full meal? I got this canned food organizing system so that I can see everything that I have on the shelves. I'll put a link to this in the description box if you're interested. Now the next category of foods we're gonna talk about are dehydrated foods. 
like jerky, dehydrated apple slices. You know, you can dehydrate all kinds of foods. They last a really long time. Dehydrated foods, the water is removed by heat and that gives you a, let's open it up here. A piece of meat or food or vegetables, whatever. You can get dehydrated turkey, dehydrated pork, chicken, dehydrated whatever you want. And it's still got a little chew to it. Mmm, that's pretty good jerky. You got to watch the salt. But remember what I was talking about combining different foods? Dehydrated beef jerky. You can simmer that and add some beans to it. Delicious. You've got a nice stew, black beans, white beans. Put some vegetables in there. And that's a whole meal. Dehydrated onions and garlic are great flavor enhancers for any dish, just about any dish. Now let's talk about freeze dried foods. I've got some freeze dried vegetables and fruits. You can even get freeze dried meats. These are broccoli florets. Now you may be wondering what's the difference between freeze dried and dehydrated? Well, dehydrated is done by removing the moisture with heat and it moves it removes about 80 to 90 percent of the water in the food freeze-dried foods are made the water is removed by freezing food and then evaporating it without that water ever becoming in a liquid state how do they do it i don't know you're gonna have to ask those nasa scientists but what you get is a product where 98 to 99% of the water is removed. So what you'll notice is that it's very light and very crisp. Freeze dried strawberries are a great snack right out of the bag. You can eat them just like this as is. I like to decorate desserts with it. Like when I made those two ingredient donuts and I crushed up some uh, freeze dried strawberries and use them as sprinkles. Oh, so delicious. I'll put the link up above and you can see that recipe. Another great thing about freeze dried foods is that they are easy to reconstitute and you don't even have to reconstitute them. You can eat them straight out of the package. Now this is freeze dried broccoli florets. I haven't tried this brand yet. You know, I bought a small amount first so we can taste it and then if we don't like it we can try another brand but let's open this up and freeze-dried foods hold their nutrients longer better than dehydrated foods so let's take a look oh i mean that looks like broccoli <laughs> like you can see how it retains most of its color it's a little faded but it doesn't get like brown like dehydrated foods do Let's give it a taste. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna love these. These are delicious. Mmm. I'm gonna be ordering more of this. Man, it's good. Mmm. You can add this to soups. Um, I would just eat it straight. They're so good. So I got dehydrated broccoli and then dehydrated spinach as well. You can make a spinach dip. I'm just going to eat this broccoli for the rest of the video. I think that's what the, vi the video is going to be, is me eating the broccoli. Um, there's no salt added or anything to this to um, preserve it. I mean, it just says ingredients, freeze-dried bro broccoli florets. And it's incredibly sweet. I'm going to get more of these. Freeze-dried foods have a great place in your prepper's pantry. They're great for long-term storage. They'll last, some people say 25 years. I mean, always check the expiration date. This expires in 2023. Will it last longer? Probably. <laughs> They're well sealed, no air is getting in there. Okay, now let's try this 
Freeze-dried broccoli, now that we've rehydrated it, squeeze some of the water. Now this feels and looks just like Almost like thawed frozen broccoli, but better. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm. It really tastes so close to fresh broccoli. Y'all, I'm shocked. I'm shook, shooketh. The next category of foods we're gonna talk about are cereals, rice, grains. Oh, corn, stuff like that. I got this big old bag. This is a 25 pound bag of rice. I got this from Sam's Club, kind of when this whole thing started happening. Uh, my husband and I went to Sam's Club. We got two 25 pound bags of rice. And I'm glad we didn't get like a big 50 pound bag because then you're dealing with like this a massive amount of rice that is open. And then you've got a break it down into lots of smaller containers. So I've already gone through most of one 25 pound bag of rice and I'll show you how we store this and how we store it once it's open. And you might be saying to yourself, white rice isn't good for you. You should eat brown rice. I love brown rice. But the thing is that the thing that makes brown rice good for you is also what makes brown rice sort of bad for prepping. The grain, the bran on there, brown rice contains its natural oils and those oils can go bad quickly. So get your brown rice, but get them in smaller packages that, and don't get a whole bunch. That's, these are something that you should get, use, and then go and get some more. Um, because after about six months, the oils in brown rice can start to get rancid and leave you with a bitter taste. So brown rice is not the best to buy in bulk. White rice can last, but white Five rice just lasts longer. so much longer, um, without the need for refrigeration or freezing. So keep that in mind when you're buying foods in bulk. So this is the rice container that I work out of. This can hold about 10 pounds of rice. So when I open this big bag, I can put 10 pounds of rice in here, and then the rest can go in this big container right there. Oatmeal is a great thing to keep in your pantry for long-term storage. I use a combination of old fashioned oats, which you can cook sweet or savory. You can grind this up in a food processor and make oat flour for your muffins. You can add that to smoothies. You can make a great black bean burger. Remember we were talking about combining things, some old fashioned oats, some black beans together, season it up good, makes a great black bean burger. I also like to get these packets of instant oatmeal. You can get them in low sugar varieties, but they make a great, really fast breakfast that keeps you pretty full. Another grain that you might consider having on hand, this is fonio. This is an ancient grain out of Africa brought to us by Yolele Foods. It is very tasty. And one cup of fonio, you cook it with two cups of water, and that makes four healthy servings. You can cook it with broth. You cook it similar to couscous, but couscous is uh, basically a wheat pasta, whereas fonio, you can see how small the grains are, and that doesn't expire until 2023. Fonio is a very tiny grain packed with nutrients, it's gluten-free and delicious. You can find Fonio at Whole Foods or order it on Amazon, that's where I got mine. I'll put a link in the description box to the Fonio and I also um, ordered these freeze-dried vegetables and fruits, the broccoli, spinach, 
and strawberries I ordered that from Amazon as well I'll put a link to that in the description box old-fashioned popping corn that is a great grain to have on hand popcorn is a fantastic snack full of fiber tasty gluten-free and good for you snacks or I've heard some people make popcorn and eat it as a cereal with milk and sugar. I haven't tried that, but I'm willing to give that a chance. I'm going to include pastas in the grain, the grain categories. Give wheat pasta or gluten-free, depending on your dietary needs. And that pasta with some canned salmon, canned chicken or canned tuna for a delicious pasta salad real and for this video I'm concentrating on food items to stock in your pantry I'm not getting into like paper products toilet paper paper towels uh, first aid type of things I'll do another video and we'll talk about all of that but those are also very important items we'll do a follow-up part two of this video and talk about the non-food things that you need to keep in your prepper's pantry flour is another important thing to keep in your pantry if you're going to be doing a lot of baking flour got super scarce um, during the early part of the shutdown and especially if you like something like this white lily flour which is perfect for making biscuits um, it got nearly impossible to find that bread flour king arthur bread flour another great brand but Flour is a great thing to get now. We don't want to wait till things get scarce and you can't find it. Baking powder. I'm going to get a large tub of baking powder from Sam's to add to this and keep in more long-term storage for your quick bread. Vanilla. Oh, I'm out of vanilla. That makes me sad. We got to stock up on vanilla and sugar. This holds about 10 pounds of sugar keeps it from getting any moisture inside so I'm gonna get some more sugar as well and brown sugar and if you're into gluten-free cooking you can find coconut flour rice flours are all great for gluten-free baking um, or you can buy your favorite gluten-free baking mix and this is maseka this is a corn Corn masa, gluten-free. Make your own tortillas with this. Oh, so good, homemade tortillas. Oh. And grits also goes in that grains and cereals category too. Once I open it, I do like to put it in a Ziploc bag to keep the freshness. This is quick grits. I also have stone ground grits, but they don't do as well in the pantry for long-term storage, so I keep that in the freezer. We have a freezer out in the back in the garage, and I keep my, this is Southern Queen stone ground grits, yellow grits, and white grits. I keep that in the freezer, and this is how they recommended that you store it for um, long-term, keep it fresh. Isn't that beautiful grits? I know I was um, focusing on the pantry today, but I did have to show you this gorgeous, look at her, isn't she, she's lovely. I had to show you this lovely stone ground grits from Southern Queen. I'll put a link to their um, Instagram page in the description box so you can take a look at that. I'll do a whole separate video on what to keep in your freezer long term for emergency storage. We'll do that another day and I'll post a link to it here. Let's head back to the pantry. And yeast was very hard to find once everything shut down. Everybody and their mama was baking bread. So if you can find some yeast now, pick some up. I am gonna actually stick this in the freezer so it'll last longer. I have some in my refrigerator that we're using now, but since we're not gonna be using this for a while, I'll stick it in the freezer. Mayonnaise is great to keep around, especially if you're making those chicken salads, tuna salads, or the salmon salads or salmon patties. That's great. 
it's a high fat food. You want to make sure once it's open, it is refrigerated. Peanut butter. If you're not allergic, peanut butter or other nut butters are great to have around for breakfast, for lunch, for cookies. And then down here on the floor, I've got a backup of cooking oil. And cooking oil you want to store in a cool, dark place because they can degrade easily in sunlight. And powdered milk, evaporated milk, great things to keep in the pantry. The evaporated milk, I use a lot for stovetop mac and cheese. I have a great recipe for that. I'll put a link to it up above. You can also get non-dairy versions, almond milk, rice milk that are shelf stable and can last for a mighty long time in your pantry. And now for the most important thing is water. The CDC recommends that you store at least one gallon of water per person per day for three days at a minimum. Now, if you're talking about um, emergency stores for three months, that's a lot of water and it takes up a lot of space. So get creative with where to store that amount of water. One thing a lot of these foods have in common are that they all need water to reconstitute them. A thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these canned fruits and vegetables are packed in water and juice. So when water is in short supply, make sure that you're not draining the liquid out of these cans. You can use that, add it to your soups and stews. It's super important to conserve that water or these juices and use them as you're cooking. Beverages are also an important thing to get. Um, things like Ovaltine or Tang, especially if you have kids, um, those are powdered drinks, the little instant coffee for myself. And then tea, this is um, Echinacea plus elderberry, um, elderberry tea. My cousin is a nurse practitioner and she told me about this. Um, you know, make sure you talk to your doctors, your medical professionals about supplements and different types of things to taste to help to take to help boost your immune system. I figured this elderberry tea, echinacea tea, would be a nice addition um, to my beverage collection. Don't forget the salt, both kosher and iodized. So I just wanted to pop into my office for a bit. We've talked about what I have. Now let's talk about what I need to get. So let's open up this computer, take a look at some of the things I am looking to order for long-term storage, that prepper's pantry, and we'll have to find some creative places to store them. I definitely want to get more freeze-dried vegetables. I loved that freeze-dried broccoli so much. So I want to try this freeze-dried corn next. And then there are these complete meal kits for super long-term storage. It's more expensive, but I really want to give these a try. I've got some beef stroganoff, tortilla soup. If you've tried anything like this, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And I don't want to encourage anybody to like hoard things and you know, I'm not trying to scare people. I just want people to be prepared. We've been through this before. <laughs> so if there is another uh, shutdown, let's just be prepared. And, you know, a little bit at a time, add to your um, stockpile just so you'll have those things you need and you won't have to be scrambling and waiting on long lines and things like that. So We'll talk more about what items we need besides food for our emergency preparedness supplies, you know, over the counter medications, um, pain relievers, birth control, paper products, all kinds of stuff like that, batteries. We'll get into all of that. In another video, we'll talk about finding alternative storage. What I showed you is my working pantry. And in the next videos, I'll show you how I'm going to build my um, backup storage pantries. We're going to use, we're going to find space under beds, maybe some closets that are not being used. Um, some things can go in the garage, but the temperature can fluctuate a lot in the garage. So, you know, 
paper products maybe you can store in there, but you gotta be careful what food supplies you put in there. All kinds of stuff we will talk about in another video. I'll put a link to that right here and we'll talk about it. Let me know if you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions about what to include in the emergency prep supplies, where to store stuff. I'd love to hear your opinions. Leave me a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit that thumbs up and have a delicious day. Stay prepared.